In this video I want to show how to make an inductance meter for radio coils. These are all radio coils and their inductance is often very low. For instance this one 0.4 microhenry, this one 15 microhenry and here for instance 8 microhenry. Um, but the inductance from these uh, small coils can easily be found with the help of an oscillator. So here I made an oscillator and what we do now is connect the uh, inductance with a parallel capacitor to the oscillator and now the oscillator will generate a certain frequency. <coughs> I did it here, this coil with this parallel capacitor and this is the frequency. And we can also read the frequency on the counter. I switched it on now. Hope it will start. Yes. This coil with this this coil, this capacitor, parallel capacitor is a tank circuit and it generates this frequency. Uh, but there is a small problem. However, I will show that this is the unknown coil. This is the parallel capacitor, but there's also parasitic capacitance and that's here in this part of the circuit. So this capacitor and this one and this one comes parallel to this capacitor. You have to find it experimentally, <coughs> the parasitic capacitance, and the best thing to do is to put this formula in a small program in BASIC. I did it here. And then you can easily calculate, make calculations. Uh, by the way, this is the oscillator. I found that the parasitic capacitance here in my case was um, 380 picofarad. So I have to add that to the fixed value capacitor. And now we have this complete. Uh, capacitance, parallel capacitance to the unknown coil. There's also a second problem and that is that the bipolar transistor is not very linear. So there is a certain non-linearity in the measurements, but when you make a frequency table, uh, here is the, you can see it, the frequency table, there's a direct relation between the frequency and the microhenry value when you use this formula. So it's a usable um, oscillator circuit. Here you can see how it's made. It was made on a piece of wood um, covered with glue first to make it moisture resistant with brass nails <coughs> and the advantage from this way of uh, constructing is also that it has very low internal uh, capacitances. So um, here you see the results, uh, 0.4 microhenry, I measured 10.9 megahertz and calculated also 10.9 megahertz, 3.6 microhenry, I measured 3.96 megahertz but calculated 3.64 uh, megahertz. So there is a certain difference between the calculated value and the measured value. And you can also see here that the nonlinearity is visible. In the high, on the high frequencies there is a difference from uh, 390 kilohertz. And on the low frequencies there is a difference when I measure it from approximately 64 kilohertz. But I think it doesn't matter when you make a frequency table, you can find directly the unknown inductance from a coil. These coils I wound myself. This is a typical shortwave coil. It works up to 17 megahertz. And this is a typical yeah, medium wave coil. <coughs> it works 
between these frequencies 595 kilohertz and 897 kilohertz with a capacitor from 500 picofarad in parallel. This is 125 uh, microhenry. So once again the circuit, how it was made. Um, <clears throat> when you want to do it perfectly you need an oscillator that has a pure waveform. And this waveform is not pure. You can see it. It's also uh, loaded by the frequency counter. So that gives also distortion of the waveform. And when you want to do these measurements very exactly, <coughs> you need uh, not a bipolar transistor, but uh, a linear acting uh, semiconductor. And um, okay, you have to set the whole circuit in, in a way that you have a pure waveform, sinusoidal, sinus waveform over the uh, frequencies. But as I told earlier, this is a simple way and it gives a useful uh, indication from the inductance.